What is an MOC? A mock, a map of contents. Why do we need one? Where do we even start? How do we pick the topic for a map of content? If you venture the world of note taking of Obsidian, you've probably seen an MOC something like this show up. First, what is an MOC map of content? This question is actually surprisingly hard to answer. Nick Milo has a great definition of this. I think he might actually be the one who came up with the term map of content itself. And he says, MLCs help you gather, develop, and navigate ideas. Because the definition is really broad, and I'm sure that's on purpose, I think there are two ways we have to think about the map of content. First, as an organizing tool, and second, as a thinking tool. As an organization tool, I actually want to come back to Nicholas Luhmann, who came up with Zetacasten. You know, I use Zetacasten in my Obsidian as well. Luhmann had a keyword index that he would use as entry points into his Zetacasten. He created this index because he didn't want it to leave to his memory to recall where this keyword surfaced in different notes. For Luhmann to navigate an endless number of physical cards that you couldn't search for, he needed an index to act as entry points into his thoughts. And what he would do is have all these important keywords and he picked one up to five notes that are associated with each. Now it's really important to note that Lumen didn't write out every single note that had the keyword in it because as we know, Zetacasten, all the notes are connected, right? All the notes in our obsidian, we use it because we can connect them. So all we need is an entry point and we'll be able to eventually find all the rest of the notes that are linked to one concept. So this keyword index for Lumen is like his MOC, like his map of content. It literally maps where he should start to explore an idea. Now, as an organization tool, I think map of content today is a little bit redundant because we can search in a vault for any keyword that we come up. Of course, this depends on the goal that you have for your ideas. If it's important to build a library, to have great organization, then go for it. For me, the goal is to have a conversation partner with the ideas that are in my head. And so what I want to focus on is the thinking tool part of the MOC. Again, let's come back to Lumen and let's look at how he took the idea of risk and what he used his index for. Under the general concept of risk, Risiko in German, sorry if I'm butchering it, he linked to one note that is about the transformation of risk. And the note is found within the general topic of complexity and specifically the reduction of complexity, which by the way, I did a video recently on this. So I'll leave the link down below if you want to check it out later. And if you follow that theorem around the reduction of complexity, it'll lead you to a variety of other ideas like security, decision-making, uncertainty, and so on. And if we follow the first note of security, we're linked to a more idea, like the reduction of risk, the absorption of risk, certainty in truth, science, law. And this is the exciting part, right? We're starting to see some recurring themes dancing around these ideas about risk, about certainty, about you know, reduction, absorption of risk. And already we're covering all sorts of different disciplines, right? There's information theory in sociology, there is law, there is money and power that's also related to this. So by starting in one place, we end up in this rabbit hole exploring all sorts of concepts and ideas in different disciplines. Wow, who knew? You know, our mind is literally ready for an adventure. So for me, a map of content at MOC is to visualize the connections, the intersections we are creating with our notes around an idea. MLC as a thinking tool helps you see the world through the lens of the core idea. In Lumen's example, when you see the world through risk, you see certainty, uncertainty, absorption of risk, reduction of risk, complexity, and you see how that varies in different fields. This eventually led him to his own insights. His book is literally titled Risk, a Sociological Theory. So when you use an MOC as a thinking tool, then it's not just to collect all the links that are related to one topic mindlessly, right? It is to process these notes, to think through them as you try to see what are the relationship between the different ideas that interact with the central theme. This is basically how you make a permanent note, which leads me to the next question of when do you use an MOC? Since the process is similar to making a permanent note, you can use this at two levels. The first level is the local level, or basically when you are making a note. By local, I mean that each note that you take could become a mini MOC, and the tool you use would be the idea compass. Now this is perfect if you're just starting out with your, your ideas, your notes, and you don't have enough to create a giant document on things like risk. 
I've covered the idea compass multiple times on this channel. If you're new here, let me give you a quick rundown and there's a video you can check out in the link in the description. You have a central idea, you put in the middle and then you stretch it in four different directions. North is where does this idea come from? South is where does this idea lead to? West is what are the ideas that are similar to this core idea? And East is what are the ideas that compete with this one? So by stretching your ideas, you already you are making a map of content, right? Connecting different ideas to a central theme. If you've been taking notes for a while and you have a lot more to go on, then you can make an MOC, a map of content at the global level. This is where you can do deeper dives into the topics that are interesting to you. It's at the global level because it is a lot more complex and it covers all sorts of different concepts together. In Nick Milo's case, it was about thinking, right? That's such a huge topic, thinking about thinking. So he processed the notes that he was taking on a local level. He talks about things like mental models, mind exercises, different ways of thinking. And these are all local notes that he's bringing up a level to analyze. Which brings me to the next point of which topic would you choose for an MOC? What are the topics that should have an MOC and which are the ones that shouldn't? In the Obsidian community, there are different ways of approaching how to pick the topic for an MOC. A lot of them are top down, as in you choose a topic like productivity, happiness. I think thinking is one as well. And you start to explore this giant idea and you dissect them. Personally, I found this too overwhelming. My brain is unable to handle such big concepts that are so vague. And so a trick that I use is actually to go back to my 12 favorite questions. If you've been around for a while, you know Feynman's 12 favorite questions. Richard Feynman, Nobel Prize winner, this is what he says about these questions. You have to keep a dozen of your favorite problems constantly present in your mind. Although by and large, they will lay in a dormant state. Every time you hear or read a new trick or a new result, test it against each of your 12 problems to see whether it helps. Every once in a while, there will be a hit and people will say, how did he do it? He must be a genius. I did a whole video on this, check it out after this link in the description. But basically these 12 questions are your fundamental curiosities in life. The books we pick up, the documentaries we decide to watch. In the end, they're all linked to, you know, these things that we're curious about and we want to find answers to. So I find that building a mock around each of these questions actually help me think through what I actually care about. They put my ideas into context. Let me show you an example. All right, so here is one of my 12 favorite questions. How can I hold two opposing ideas at the same time and function? So I want to explore this as an MOC. And the first place I start was how did I get here in the first place? And it was actually from seeing this quote from Fitzgerald saying that the test of a first rate intelligence is the ability to hold two opposing ideas in mind and still retain the ability to function. So I just go on a trail of what my thought is to build out this mock, this MOC. So first of all, okay, this is about intelligence for Fitzgerald. Then there are two opposing ideas. So this for me reminds me of a paradox, right? How can we have two things that seem to not make sense, seems to be opposite from each other, and yet it, that's how the world works. So it leads me to another quote that I found from Richard Feynman himself saying that the paradox is only a conflict between reality and your feeling of what reality ought to be. So to me, that was a huge reframe of my world. And I thought, okay, that means it's more of a hint. Every time that we think there's a paradox, we think that something doesn't make sense. It's actually just indicating to us that there is a missing piece of understanding there. So then let's go forward and think about the insight, right? Because that's what's new, what we're learning about. So I wrote down here that I had a note on insight is something that doesn't make sense, but how do we arrive at these? So of course, you know, we can come upon a paradox and think, okay, well, there must be some sort of insight hidden here, but are there systematic ways of finding these paradoxes? And one of the things I was reading uh, was about scientific thinking. So this one specifically from uh, Carlo Rovelli said that scientific thinking is understanding something before it is observed. So actually we don't even need to see it in order to understand something like there's a leap of faith here. And to me, that's quite interesting. And so I write this down here and I even did a mini uh, MOC inside this note, as you can see here. So at the local level, you know, what are similar, what are opposite. And I even left a note for myself in the note that says, you know, build on this idea. So then let's think about this. One of the takeaways we can say is that the capacity to constantly call our conceptions into question is important and that thinking is not linear. 
Okay, that's interesting. Which led me to then ways of thinking, right? You know, there's linear thinking, there's non-linear thinking. How do we think? Right, so this led me to thinking dualities. An example from Aristotle saying that what is vice and what is virtue is that vice is just at the two extremes of something, and virtue is right in the middle. So you have a good balance of the two extremes. Okay, so there's an interesting way of thinking about it. There's thinking like a philosopher that David Perel talked about, which led me to okay, creativity. This is also interesting because creativity is about making connections. It's about seeing you know different dots and trying to be able to connect them, right? Find the middle ground for them. There is something、um, I read here about taking dopamine enhancing drugs help us stay motivated and focused, but it makes us lose the ability. To make associations, so there is an interesting tension there, right? When we're trying to focus, we seem to be not creative, and vice versa. But in this life, we're told, you know, focus, 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 focus. You can only do one thing at a time. So how can we balance that innovation with this, you know, laser focus? I don't know. I'm just exploring these ideas here, right? So that leads me to divergent thinking, convergent thinking. When do we do each? Right back to how do you hold those two opposite ideas together and the ways of thinking. And then I have some examples、um, that I've been coming across. You know, Janis Wurz. I wrote a newsletter on this,、um, the paradox of personal monopoly. I've also written about this. So these are kind of my outputs. Trying to articulate why there are paradoxes in our lives and how can we move through them. And so this, to me, is how a mock is a thought partner, a thinking tool, right? Where we just go down a rabbit hole, albeit linearly,、uh, which I find a little bit frustrating. And so I already talked about in another video here that、um, having a mind map or using Canvas in Obsidian is a really good way to then reorganize these things. And as a visual person, I really need more space to move these concepts around. So I use Canvas in Obsidian or just mind mapping to help me move spatially. See what are the possibilities of combining and recombining these concepts together. So check out this video here on how I do that for MOC, as well as if you want to start finding your Feynman's twelve questions, check out this video, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.